What if I told you the most luxurious metal in the world is not gold, or even platinum, but an ultra-rare precious metal that has only recently started to be used in high-end jewelry and as one of the most unique ways to store wealth on the planet? Osmium is not only the rarest of all precious metals, clocking in at an astonishing 1,500 times rarer than gold, but also the rarest non-radioactive element and the densest naturally occurring element found on Earth. Osmium also enjoys the status of being one of the most beautiful materials to behold, with a unique luster that rivals the finest grade diamonds, and a crystalline structure with an ultra-high reflectivity that dazzles the eye. One of the most intriguing aspects of Osmium's rise to prominence is that it has only been available to the retail public since 2014, as the process to crystallize osmium was discovered in 2013 by Swiss scientists after 40 years of research and remains a closely guarded secret to this day. Osmium's authenticity is also impossible to counterfeit as it sports a naturally built-in security feature that proves ownership of each unique piece. If all of this weren't enough, osmium's rarity is also accelerating making it an incredible investment vehicle that will become increasingly scarce in the years ahead. Curious to learn more? Join us on a journey from a humble laboratory in England to the height of decadence as we shine a light on the world's most luxurious metal. It's Osmium on Commodity Culture. Osmium is a chemical element with a melting point of 3033 degrees Celsius, a boiling point of 5008 degrees Celsius, a relative atomic mass of 190.23, and the atomic number 76. It is a steel blue transition metal belonging to the platinum group metals, sharing that distinction with platinum, palladium, ruthenium, rhodium, and iridium. Osmium is mined alongside platinum. To give you an idea just how rare osmium is, for every 10,000 tons of platinum ore mined, approximately 30 grams of osmium can be extracted. In addition to its rarity and incredible density, osmium also has the highest abrasion resistance and pressure resistance of any element on the periodic table. Although osmium previously found some limited use in light bulbs, fountain pen tips, instrument pivots, and electrical contacts, in its early days, its exceptional rarity made it expensive and difficult to procure, and so it fell out of favor as an industrial commodity rather quickly. This same rarity is now osmium's main strength, as its value is becoming realized in the tangible asset and jewelry markets. To allow for it to be viable in non-industrial applications, a group of Swiss scientists spent four decades perfecting a method of crystallization that renders raw osmium into a beautiful material surpassing the finest stones available. Crystallized osmium sparkle makes its only natural rival, diamonds, pale in comparison. With the ability to perfectly reflect parallel sunlight, osmium shines more brilliantly than the highest grade diamonds. In addition, osmium doesn't refract light, ensuring that the light it emits retains its full intensity. This remarkable property, combined with osmium's ability to be cut with precision, allows for the creation of stunningly flawless jewelry designs, from sharp, pointed shapes to smooth, soft contours. More and more jewelers are starting to work with osmium and add it to their luxury pieces because of its dazzling visual characteristics, scarcity, and consumer demand from people who value owning a one-of-a-kind piece of art with intrinsic value that also makes it a unique store of wealth. For those looking to purchase pure crystallized osmium as a tangible asset that could rise in value over time, osmium is crafted into squares, bars, and discs for investment purposes, all with the same incredible sparkle that make it ideal for jewelry. Every single piece of crystallized osmium is registered in the World Osmium Database, which is connected to a corresponding QR code in the hands of the customer to stop counterfeiting and prove ownership. This adds a built-in layer of security and authenticity 
that makes osmium like no other precious metal available on the market today. Adding to all of this, the world's supply of crude osmium is being exhausted right now, as you're listening to me speak. The Americans call this impending event the Osmium Big Bang. This realization could lead the market to revalue osmium at a much higher price. Osmium will then hold the unique distinction of being the first precious metal to run out completely, due to the fact that only a certain amount will be crystallized from here on out. With so much value packed into such a small amount of material, osmium is also extremely efficient to transport and store, making it ideal for those seeking discretion in their tangible asset investments. One of the things that makes the osmium market stand apart from other metals is the three distinct stages expected to evolve for osmium as extremely scarce supply collides with ever-growing demand. The first stage of the market is the raw osmium phase. This involves osmium being mined and processed from a handful of locations around the world. The Osmium World Council estimated years ago that there are only around 22 tons or one cubic meter of osmium currently below ground in raw form. Nowadays, it is nearly impossible to buy ethically sourced raw osmium. On top of this lack of supply, ESG compliant deposits in stable jurisdictions and mined in a way that minimizes environmental damage are even more rare. Osmium is found in South Africa, North and South America, Japan, Borneo, Australia, and in the Urals in Russia. Given the current geopolitical environment, Russian supply is largely considered off limits by the industry at large. At the moment, we have reached the end game when it comes to the raw osmium phase. Mineable reserves are almost depleted, and availability of raw material for processing and eventual crystallization is becoming harder to come by. The event that starts the second stage of the market is the Osmium Big Bang. With only 300 kilograms of ethically sourced raw osmium currently above ground, the decision has been made to not crystallize anymore. Because the crystallization process was discovered over the course of four decades by a small group of scientists who are sworn to secrecy, the chances of another group entering the game are very low indeed. When we also consider that customers are demanding ethically sourced material of the highest quality, and all of this is trackable via the Osmium database, the layers of complexity in replicating the current Osmium market and finding new customers is extraordinarily high. The final stage of the market relates strongly to osmium's growing use in jewelry, and is known as the osmium thin-out. As the available crystalline osmium is formed into rings, necklaces, and more for the jewelry market, and discs, stars, and bars for the investment market, the osmium economy will be allowed to flow naturally, and as products are sold, there will no longer be any additional pieces to replace existing stocks and meet rising demand. As the years and decades advance, osmium will become more and more scarce and difficult to obtain, similar to a specific wine vintage that can never be replicated beyond its initial release. What will this do to the prices? We can only speculate, but as major luxury brands look to add osmium to their product lines, and more buyers around the world start to wake up to osmium's built-in rarity and intrinsic value, prices are expected to move considerably higher as the years go by. Adding to this innate scarcity, osmium is not recycled and cannot be melted down and reformed as with other precious metals without losing its crystalline surface, which is the fingerprint through which investment-grade osmium is able to be identified. Once osmium, be it jewelry or an investment piece, is produced and registered in the osmium database, it will remain that way eternally. Osmium was first discovered by an English chemist and physician named Smithson Tennant. Smithson collaborated with another English chemist and physician, William Hyde Wollaston, and the duo were instrumental in discovering many of the platinum group metals. The year was 1803, and while dissolving platinum in aqua regia, both men made separate and remarkable discoveries while examining the black powder residue left behind from this process. While Wollaston discovered palladium and rhodium, Tennant isolated two other elements 
which he dubbed Iridium and Osmium. Both published their findings in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society in 1804. Sadly, Smithson's career was cut short when he was crushed by his horse after a bridge collapsed underneath him in France, fracturing his skull and leading to his demise in 1815. In the early days of incandescent light bulbs, osmium was one of the first materials chosen for the filament due to its remarkably high melting point, which allowed it to endure the intense heat needed to generate light without melting. Osmium's durability also allowed the light bulbs in which it was used to have a long life, making it an ideal material for the short time in history it was employed for this purpose. Osmium was eventually replaced with tungsten, which was discovered to have a higher melting point and produced a stronger and more efficient light, along with being far more abundant and cost-effective. Osmium's use languished following this time, as industrial applications were very limited. However, once the crystallization process was discovered and refined in 2013 in Switzerland, the game completely changed. Starting in 2014, Osmium made its debut as a standout material for watch manufacturing, a trend that has accelerated in recent years. The first wristwatch to use Osmium was the classic fusion tourbillon firmament made by Hublot in 2014. Osmium was used on the dial of the watch, adding an element of luxury like nothing else available on the market at the time, and the price certainly reflects this. If you'd like to get your hands on this watch today, expect to shell out well over $100,000 for the privilege. Around this same time, the first pieces of show-stopping osmium jewelry began to be produced, followed by investment pieces for the tangible asset market. The Osmium Institute was established in Germany in 2017, and this part of Osmium's history is absolutely vital to the story. The Institute was created to oversee the uniform handling in trade and processing of crystalline Osmium internationally, both as a jewelry metal and a tangible asset. After Osmium is crystallized in Switzerland, it is transported to the German Osmium Institute, where it is vigorously tested to establish quality and authenticity. Before a single piece of osmium can go into circulation in the hands of the public, these tests must be conducted, resulting in an osmium identification code for each product. Without this code, which is unique to each piece, the osmium cannot be transacted and is not considered to be authentic. This places a level of transparency on markets and acts as a form of anti-counterfeiting technology, along with curbing illicit secondary market activity. The Osmium Institute also negotiates import regulations around the world for crystalline osmium, informs both the public and companies about the use of osmium, and drives the expansion of affiliated Osmium Institutes globally. Since 2017, additional Osmium Institutes have been established in 30 countries around the world, including Brazil, the United States, China, South Korea, France, and many more. This strong network has helped the popularity of crystalline osmium to accelerate, driving demand across continents. As crystalline osmium first began to be used in the luxury jewelry and tangible asset market, its production was not yet streamlined, and so the quality of the final product had many variations. The price at this point was mainly calculated based on the percentage of crystalline osmium that was confirmed as fully produced on a daily time frame. Prices today are established in a more sophisticated manner, but before we explain, it is important to discuss an event known as the osmium fork and how it has impacted markets. When speaking of forks in an asset, most people think of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. In this case, a fork is a protocol change that establishes a new set of rules for the blockchain network. This can cause changes in the price for a variety of reasons, including increased or decreased scarcity, production costs, transaction speeds, and more. In the case of Osmium, the fork occurred in June of 2023 as a result of optimizing the production process for crystallized Osmium, thus reducing its production costs as well. The osmium fork caused the price of the metal to drop by nearly 35%, making it more affordable for jewelers and investors to purchase. 
People who already held osmium when the fork occurred actually got shipped additional material to compensate for the price drop, made possible by the osmium identification code we discussed earlier. One side effect of the fork was to further reduce supply by sending this additional osmium to existing owners, and the price has been rising steadily since that time, with expectations that it will eventually meet and exceed prices before the fork occurred. Today, the price of crystalline osmium is determined in a different way than it was in early markets. Prices are discussed and determined by a group of osmium experts in the Osmium World Council. The council handles a number of vital tasks to the crystalline osmium market, including training financial market participants about osmium, developing and refining processing guidelines for crystalline osmium, disseminating information on osmium to governments around the world, and much more. As part of their mandate, the Osmium World Council conducts market research, calculates the remaining supply of crystalline osmium in the hands of the retail public, and reserves yet to be sold, and determines the price. Council President Marco Saito announced the new developments in pricing in 2024, and since then, it has been determined that a price rise of 120% will be carried out in phases until 2027, putting an additional premium on an already rare commodity. Osmium's introduction into the marketplace as a tangible asset for investment purposes and as a material used in jewelry is still in its early stages. And yet, supplies of this ultra-rare precious metal are becoming more and more scarce. This unique confluence of factors makes right now a unique moment in time for the metal, between its creation and the end of its production journey. With osmium crystallization being phased out and demand ramping up from luxury goods manufacturers, jewelers, and the retail public, the very definition of exclusive is taking hold in the osmium market. Add to this, growing interest in the Saudi Arabian, UAE, South Korean, and Chinese markets is beginning to rise exponentially, with many other markets expected to try and join the party before the DJ plays the swan song and the curtains close on crystallized osmium production. After the last crystalline osmium piece is sold into the market, prices are expected to react accordingly, and those who already took hold of osmium will be unlikely to sell such a rare piece of precious metals history without being compensated accordingly. Osmium's imminent thin-out makes it an incredible store of value, and is also likely to attract gold and silver stackers and others who want to store a portion of their wealth in a tangible asset completely free of counterparty risk. With Osmium, the worldwide database acts as an extra layer of security above and beyond traditional physical gold or silver bullion, making it an appealing alternative to those seeking certainty in protecting and growing their wealth. How high the price of Osmium could go is anyone's guess. The newest and rarest precious metal is likely set to surprise the market and establish itself around the globe as the new ideal of luxury, value, and prestige.